So we, we can talk politics all day. I can see that. But what we need to talk about is the Right Excellence Festival. Facts. That's what we're here for. Well, that's what we're here for. What is the Right Excellence Festival? Well, like I said, I'm from Northwest Georgia. Um, I've lived there. My I lived there my whole life. I grew up there. And growing up there, you know, I always felt like the other, right? The other. Okay. The other in my own community. You know what I mean? Stranger in Moscow. Right. You understand. Um, I didn't really feel like, you know, it always felt like black people were just there. Like it, there was never a story about why we were there. There was never a reason. It was like the culture had left the area, right? And it was like, what what is going on? Because when I grew up, was growing up when I was very young, we would have talent shows and things like that at, with the community. And as I got older, it just dissipated. You know, it all right. dissipated and nothing was going on. Um, and so I left and went to school and I started doing a lot more research. And I, and I discovered this man, his name was Richard Wright. Okay. Richard Wright, he, he was born in Dalton, Georgia. He was born a slave. Um, but when um, General Sherman came through Dalton, he ended up going to Atlanta um, and where he got his degree um, and things like that. And he ended up going to Savannah and started in Savannah State University. OK. Uh, started Savannah State. He was a founder of Savannah State University. And he went up to um, Pennsylvania, started um, black owned banks. Um, he actually his banks were only were actually one of the only few to make it through the Great Depression um, during that time. And so Richard Wright, he was a Daltonian that I never heard of. Never heard of. That's fucking crazy. You should have heard about him 14 times over. Right. He was a he was a great man. He was in the army. He had done, he was a he had went to West Point. He had done all sorts of great things, right? Just a great American. He actually helped found um Black History Month. Um he 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 uh, actually started Black History Week, I think, or Black History. He was one of the founders of Black History Week. Um, okay. And so he's really been, he, he was really a, a very prominent figure in the early 20th century among intellectuals and just in the culture in general that we never heard of. And I said, well, this is a shame. This man deserves a festival. He was an excellent person. Mm -hmm. He deserves some type of recognition. This is all, this all came at the time where during the Black Lives Matter movement um, was going on as well. And, you know, somebody told me, you know, let's not make this moment let's not make this moment turn let's turn this moment into a movement that's what they said that's exactly what they said. let's turn this moment into a movement i like that and i and i when they said that it was kind of like okay we this we got we got to start somewhere we, we have a mon monumental task ahead of us right whitfield i only can speak for whitfield county um but from what i can tell you know black people there just don't have opportunity you know opportunities lacking in the in the community and, and with them, and exa exactly, you know, talking with people and, you know, the Right Excellence Festival has put me in contact with a lot of different people. So I've been able to discuss what's going on in these communities. And it's the same thing. You know, opportunity is just not there. You know, upward mobility is not is not there. Um, and it's like, and why, people, don't why know, that? people don't know what upward mobility even looks like. No, they don't. They don't. So, like so like you think about it, y'all have, you know, y'all are a factory town just like we are. People strive like, you know, we see a lot of people see a good paying job as being a supervisor at the damn factory. Right. And don't get me wrong. There ain't nothing wrong with working at the factory. There's nothing wrong with it. Like I did some factory work in college. Right. I, I have an appreciation for it. But that's not upward mobility. Right. And that's not for everybody at the same time. It's everybody not. Should, if you want... And that's why I was telling somebody. But I mean, you're like, not getting 12 hours out of me in no goddamn factory. No, this point in life. it's not it's, happening. And it's like, what, what opportunity do you have? There should be opportunity, right? There should be. There should be opportunity for people who have the skills, right? Hey, like, think, think about this shit, though. Think about the people who worked at your school, not just the teachers, the counselors, the administration staff. How many of them had left Northwest Georgia? How many of them had left the Southeast? How many of them had careers outside of teaching? How many of them are traveled, learned enough to the actually teach. positively teach kids? Like I've said that. I've said that before. I've said that plenty of times, man. And I've I, gotten flack behind. I've gotten flack behind that from teachers. They're like, "Well, what do you mean?" I'm like, "Dude, I know you guys. We went to school together. You went yeah, to school right. for four years. Like, what are you talking about? You don't know shit about shit, right?" right. And I'm. 
Only thing you can teach is what's on this damn, what's in this damn curriculum. But you can't talk about, yeah, you know, I spent, I spent five years in California, and being from the South, uh, moving to California, you talk about being dropped into a, a totally different environment that you don't know shit about, and your views on society are drastically different than the 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 what's going on out there, and it was. It was barbecue or meal would do. Right, right. I, my mom told me this because I, I want to be involved in the education system at some point in my life. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about teaching out of college. And she was like, well, what are you going to teach? Social studies, poli sci major. I love it. She was like, no, no, no. But like, what experiences are you going to provide in the classroom that these kids can relate to? What are you going to talk about? going to college then teaching so not that again not that you can't teach a curriculum and not to shit on people who to figure out at 18 years old i'm gonna be a damn teacher at 22. no we need people who are passionate about teaching but so often, so often you find people with no worldview no no culture and they have so much experience on our kids and unfortunately, in places like uh, Whitfield County and Bartow County, you can't see the forest for the trees. You can't. You can't. No, you can't. You don't. You don't. You, you can't, man. And it. And then that. That's that. That's the issue for me, man. It's like the uh, the op uh, the lack of opportunity. You know, the lack of culture in the community, right? The lack of culture uh, acknowledgement of that we have a culture, right? Yeah. I grew up. I grew up in a town, you know, where they drew like swastikas and and nigger in the books man and they they all this people this racism that people are just now talking about we've been going through this up there yeah we've bro been, we've been going through it like people just call you nigger for no reason you know talk about your blackness you're you're the you're the brunt of the black jokes you know you know yeah. if you got white friends you're the brunt of the black jokes you know you've been told you can't date this person straight to your face like nah like my daughter can't date black people like and you kind of look like, ah, and you have certain experiences. And it's like, man, this community is like, really, it really needs some some culture. It needs something, some diversity. Man, it does. And it needs something. Somebody has to challenge this view that these people have. And that's what the Right Excellence Festival is for, to, to display black people in a positive light, right? You know, we okay. always talk about racism. We always talk about this Jim Crow slavery, da, 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 da. But we, we have a long history. We have a very long history. We're the oldest people in the world. In the world, we're black people. We're the oldest people on the planet. We have a very long history. We can talk about other stuff besides that. Let's talk about some of the positive things, you know. And I just doing some research in Northwest Georgia. I didn't know there was a Tuskegee Airman from Bartow County. Yeah, I did not know that. That 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 is amazing to me, right? From Northwest Georgia, there was a Tuskegee Airman. And Nobody the wild thing is, we watched the Tuskegee Airman movie. And we go, oh shit, that's dope. He's a dude from Bartow County. Like he's he's from where you're from. Yes, he's from where you're from. You can be that guy. That's that's what movies are for. You're supposed to put yourself in that in that person's position. These people that we talk about, you're supposed to be able to to say, "Oh, I can be like him." But instead, we focus on all the negative. Like, how much money can? How much? How many more slave movies are we going to see? You know, Roots told a great story, but, it but damn it, man. Uh, and I'll tell you something funny. My mom, not a big fan of good times. She didn't let me watch Martin growing up. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I couldn't watch Martin growing up. Sorry. <laughs> um, and I, in turn, and I didn't start watching Sanford and Sons until I got a little bit older because, again, my mom's just like, I don't want you watching, you know, poor the poor black experience, the struggling black experience. So I watched a lot of the Cosby show. Sorry, yeah, I watched the Cosby show. It was a great fucking show. <laughs> and I watched a lot of Fresh Prince. And then on my own, I found Jamie Foxx. Even if you look at the, the structure of Jamie Foxx, you, it's a black-owned hotel that's, that people, you know, yeah, they're struggling, but it's still black-owned hotel. And, you know, when all the it people come to L.A., they come to the, they, they come to the King's Towers. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I watched, for me, growing up, it was watching Black Excellence and always seeing that 
and not necessarily taking in, yeah, Martin is funny, you know, but what type of value and inspiration do you really draw from watching right. Martin? I mean, outside of his grind going from radio host to 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 TV show host, yeah, I got that. But when you look at the Cosby show, right? Look at look at look at it. You got Cliff, who's the, the gynecologist freak. <laughs> uh, you got Claire, who's the lawyer. Theo goes to NYU. Sandra and um dang, what's Lisa Bonet name on there? You, you know, Lisa Bonet. They both go to Hillman, right? Which is, you know, your made up HBCU. And then you got your spinoff, A Different World, which is one of my favorite shows. And it's about black prosperity and not, you know, black struggle. Right. And that's, you know, it's like you have to even it's not just for black people, right? Like I'm doing this for the whole community, right? Because everybody has messed up notions of black people in their mind. And I didn't realize that until I got to Atlanta. Right. And that's what I learned, too. Like I, I remember one of my friends, he, he told me to pick him up one day and I drove through this nice neighborhood and I was like, dang bunch of white people must live up in here. Like, I, that's what the first thing that came into my head, because where I'm from, it's not like that. You don't see black people living in the in the sub big subdivision, whole neighborhood full of them. Just mm-hmm. black people living there. And I was like, whoa, well, this is interesting. I ain't never seen nothing like this. And, I, and it's like, I never seen black people just hustling, right? Legitly hustling. Like, I never seen, I didn't see it like that. And so like, the Right Excellence Festival, we're trying to, to, you know, shed light on the, the good things that people are doing. You know, people, the small businesses, right? You know, our, our positive black history, like the Tuskegee Airmen, you know, Chubb Town, um, over there in Cedar Town, uh, a black owned, uh, a black town, right? It was a black unincorporated town, like in Northwest Georgia, that we don't get taught about in high school, elementary school, nothing. Bro, we don't even learn about that shit in church during Black History Month. Bro, and I'm, I'm saying, why not? Why, why, why not? You know, we there's Richard Wright. There's so many people that came to. I have a cousin. His name's Mel Pender. 1968 Olympics, Mexico City. You know, the famous when everybody did that with the Black Power Fist. The man that was from Dalton, Georgia, was that was there. He won the gold medal in the four by one hundred. My cousin. His name's Mel Pender. Nobody That's talks right. about him. They don't. It's it, why. It's like so. Why? So I said, the only way people are gonna know is if black people tell the story. Let let's let's tell the story. Let's do it ourselves. And so I came up with the, the Right Excellence Festival where we're going to have black vendors, right? Okay. Black businesses. We're going to have black culture on display through our music, through our art, through our history, right? And we're just going to have a good time and just and be positive. Bring some some people that have made it made it successful and, and, and serve as inspiration for all people in the community. Um, you, 